Hey, what's up, guys? David Huffaker here with another week of information about what's going on in your world and in the industry at large. So it is the week, uh, third week of January. Um, hopefully, uh, at the time of this recording, hopefully when you get this, uh, we'll have a, you know four feet of snow on the ground here in Middle Tennessee. I know a lot of people anticipating snow for the weekend. So uh, please be safe. Uh, a lot going on out in the world. Uh, and of course, make sure you buy every loaf of bread in the grocery store. That's always helpful. All right, guys. Uh, so what's going on in the world, right? A lot of you probably hearing us talk a lot about interest rates all of a sudden being a hot topic, uh, seeing them creep up to some of their highest levels uh, that we've seen in the last few years and, and probably expecting that trend to somewhat continue. Uh, we've said for some time that uh, everything going on in the world, that that's going to have to happen at some point or most likely to happen. Uh, so we'll continue to watch it, right? I'll say a few years ago, we also said that and uh, rates continue to stay the same. Uh, but we didn't have the inflationary pressures that we had back then. And so uh, this week we saw mortgage rates. I just checked them. Uh, it says uh, as of the end of the week here, uh, it is today is January 14th while I'm shooting this. Uh, so, uh, you know, run of 3.7, 3.8, right? Creeping back up till four uh, to 4% 4 uh, and may continue to see those hold or go up a little bit more. Uh, do you want to just help you kind of get a grasp? We haven't talked about interest, interest rates in years. I know back when I was in uh, real estate in uh, 06, 07, 08, 09, uh, interest rates were always a big conversation. Uh, and keep in mind that as the feds increase the federal fund rate, that is actually the rate at which the government loans banks money. Okay, so that's not actually the mortgage rate or the interest rate. So if you're new to the business or you haven't had a whole lot of uh, time to digest some of that data, just know that that is not them. When they say they're raising interest rates, that does not mean they're raising mortgage rates. It means they're raising the fund or the rate at which they loan banks money. They've kept that low for many, many years, right? For a long time, they've kept that low. One of the ways that the government, one of their best tools that they have in order to help uh, the economy is to lower the rate in which uh, money is loaned. So you saw back in 2009 and 2010, when the, when the economy was really struggling, you saw them lower it down to pretty much nothing, uh, really, really low in most cases. I don't, I don't know the exact number if it got down to zero or not, but it was really low, right, uh, for the banks to get the money so that they could loan it to people to help get money out to get the economy going again. Well, as we saw economics uh, turn and, and saw the, you know, really this economic boom we've had over the last several years as we've kind of made up a lot for what was lost during the recession, the feds have not raised the rates back. And, and their challenge in not doing that is that it, it provides a very healthy economy and makes money very uh, affordable uh, out there. But, but the challenge is, is that as if, uh, if there are troubles, they can't lower it to try to help offset it because they never raise them back up. And so I think they're starting to see uh, inflationary issues come up. I believe uh, I was looking at my notes say inflation uh, rose 7%. Uh, that's the biggest increase we've seen since 1982. And if you think about the economic conditions in the mid to late 80s, uh, and some of the struggles that they really uh, ran with, especially with really high inflation in the late 80s and, and things that they had to do. Uh, I think that there are some concerns out there. Remember, inflation is a result of too much cheap money being pumped into the economy. And so what have we done? What has our government done over the last several years as we've tried to navigate COVID? And, and, and you know, probably rightfully so, whatever. I'm sure everybody has an opinion on that. But as these stimulus checks have come out and come into the, into the economy, our government just can't continue to print money and put it into the hands of people. That, that, that causes an imbalance uh, in the overall economics. So as you're thinking about that, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates. They're currently, they had said they were going to raise it three times this year. Again, the month they meet uh, every few months uh, to, to have that discussion. So it's kind of said probably raising it three times this year. Now they're talking about raising it four times uh, each time that they meet. Uh, and they'll have to make that decision, right? You'll notice as it gets closer uh, for them to meet, they'll kind of weigh in and make the decision based off what's going on uh, in the economy and in the world and in the news, right? Uh, but don't necessarily relate that to mortgage rates going up. Now, historically, mortgage rates will follow um, some other key metrics that you can track, but, but just stay in touch with your mortgage companies, right? Watch the news. You, you likely will see mortgage rates continue to go up, but that's actually a response to uh, what's going on in the market and what's going on uh, in the in the you know in the stock market and in the economy and so um, don't necessarily relate the two right Fed funds going up does not necessarily 100% relay over the, that the interest rates are going up as you see interest rates climb guys you're going to see uh, this uh, kind of chain reaction happen right it's a little bit like a train right like you'll see a lot of people will get off the fence because of fear of inflation rates going up so short term 
interest rates going up will get a lot of uh, you know people on the fence or tire kickers off the fence and out and into the market and into buying houses. You'll also see sellers start to put their home on the market because all of a sudden as interest rates go up, what goes down, right? Uh, as interest rates go up, uh, the uh, um, affordability of a home goes down, right? If I have to pay more in interest, I can now afford less home, which ultimately if that, if that holds over the next, let's say 18 months, will start to put downward pressure on prices because people just simply won't be able to afford what's out there. Sellers who wanna sell will have to match what the buyer can afford or what they can actually spend. And so you'll see that really hold back the, the, the price growth out there. Okay, all that to say, a lot of jargon going on there. Don't sweat the interest rates extremely uh, with them. Talking about the federal funds rate, do pay attention to what's going on with your preferred lender, have conversations with them about what they foresee happening and make sure that your client is educated on what's going on in the market. Guys, rates being at 4% is not crazy. Rates being at 6% is not crazy. Um, so I don't want you to think it's going to completely disrupt the industry. I think that you'll see as it continues to grow, you have to just become more educated on how to have that conversation with the consumer. So make sure you're brushing up on those skills. Really a 30 minute class with a mortgage lender would, would probably go a long way right now in helping keep you as the, as the local expert. So as people are asking, I bet I've had seven people in the last 24 hours asking about interest rates because it's now a topic in the news. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, so again, uh, last thing here, we got family reunion coming up in February, kind of shifting gears on you. Uh, that is February 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. A lot of cool stuff going on in Orlando, in person. I believe right now there's about 10,000 people signed up. We have been told that it will 100% happen uh, in person. There will also be a virtual option. Uh, so let's say, for instance, that you sign up in person and then you get sick or you get nervous about going or something changes and you want to shift to virtual you 100% will have that option. And so uh, being together with everyone, uh, they've got some really unique programs this year of how they're gonna do it, keep everyone safely distanced from each other and minimize the impact. Keep in mind, you will need a vaccination card or proof of a negative COVID test within 72 hours of arrival if you're not vaccinated. Uh, so just keep that in the back of your mind as you're going. Booking flights and hotels, those do book up rather quickly. And guys, one of the best things about family reunion is all the things happening around family reunion. So not just family reunion itself, but the events that are happening, the uh, awards banquets that are happening and things like that. If you're in the Southeast region, the Southeast region awards banquet will be Monday night on the 21st. So you can RSVP to that and have some dinner and cocktails and have fun celebrating with your friends. Uh, I know here at the Huffaker Group, we're planning on putting on a cocktails, coaches and contacts event on Sunday evening. So if you want to be a part of that, that should be a really fun event uh, to be able to participate in. And then as well, I know that if you're a MAPS client, uh, you have a free ticket to Epcot on Saturday evening, I believe, uh, to, to experience. Uh, they usually shut down and just have just MAPS clients there uh, for that. And then, of course, if you're flying in on Friday, I know Gary's Masterminds on Friday. Several of the masterminds are happening around Friday afternoon. And so just a good chance to get your market center and your people together uh, so that you guys can enjoy the evening together, have dinner and fellowship on Friday. Don't forget Sunday of Family Reunion, there is a Keller Williams golf tournament going to raise money for Keller Williams, uh, Keller Williams Cares and Keller Williams uh, Kids Cares. And so a chance to participate, have fun and play with people like, uh, I don't know, um, you know, uh, Mark King and Jason Abrams and, and Carl Liebert and, and some of the leaders uh, be fun to hobnob and be able to just hang out and help raise money for a good cause. Guys, I hope you're having a great week. Please reach out to me if I can ever be of assistance. Also, don't hesitate to reach out to your market center leadership or your ALC if you have any questions or concerns that we can be helpful with. See you soon, guys.